Jeff, I want to take you back to, to Monday. Who wrote the initial statement that was disseminated from your organization? Who approved it? And what was your initial investigation that led you to believe this story was fabricated? Okay, well, first of all, thank you all uh, for your time. Um, as you know, we've released a statement, and in that statement, um, we've said a couple of things. First of all, apologies to Stephanie and to the rest of the people that were involved in the incident. Um, we have uh, separated with Brandon Taubman. He's no longer an employee of the Astros. His behavior was inappropriate and not representative of who the Astros are and our culture and what we stand for. Um, that original um, reaction by the Astros was wrong, and we own it as an organization. Uh, there were many people involved in reviewing that and approving that, and I'm not going to get into the details of that. It was wrong. It was the Astros' decision, and that's, um, that's where I'm going to leave that. Uh, Brian, right here. Jeff, was, was the state, that original statement, was that composed by one person or by a group of people? Like I said, I know, you, I know you all are curious to see who wrote it and who approved it. And it was an organizational statement. It, there was nobody's name on it. There were a lot of people involved in reviewing it, looking at it, approving it. And it's, it was on behalf of the Astros. But regardless of who wrote it and who approved it, it was wrong. It was incorrect. It should never have been sent out. We've learned a lesson about it. Um, we had a, a sense of what had happened that was different than what we found out pretty pretty immediately afterwards, um, but we wanted to wait and, and make further statements that were correct and not sort of react again to new information because, quite frankly, not all the information that was received uh, at the beginning, even in the middle, even at the end, is consistent with the other information. So there are some uh, varying um, degrees of, of detail recollection of who was where and all of that. And as you would imagine, after a long night, uh, and so, you know, it's not 100% clear um, what the truth is, but what, what we do know is the truth is that those comments were inappropriate. Um, they were directed at individuals, and that's inappropriate, and, and we weren't going to tolerate that. Right, right here. Um, I, I think you just said you're not quite sure what the truth is. No, I mean, I, I'm not saying I don't know what the truth is. There's a lot of details when you're trying to reconstruct what happened in an evening like that. The truth is that Brandon made inappropriate comments directed at uh, people that were in the room, and, and they're not something that we um, stand for that reflect our values or that, or that we're going to tolerate, which is why we, we led, led us to the decision that we made today. I know you don't want to say who, who wrote the statement, who came up with the idea, but I think... A lot of people in this room are probably interested in sort of the mindset behind blaming the reporter for making up this story. Um, we don't, you know, you said you didn't want to say who, who came up with this idea, but can you just talk about the mindset that you would turn around a statement pretty quickly, pointing a finger at the, the female reporter in the room? Yeah, I mean, I can tell you it, it, it was wrong. Um, the the uh, belief was that it was one colleague talking to another colleague and having been overheard and it was not intended to be overheard. Um, and we discovered later that that was indeed not the case. And that's, uh, you know, that's wrong. But no, there's no, um, it, it was incorrect to, uh, to, make, to make that first statement. There's nothing about that first statement that, that was correct or that's defensible. And we take, we take accountability for it. We take ownership of it. And um, it was wrong. Well, I, okay. I'm not defending that first statement, and I don't want to parse the words in that first statement. It was it was incorrect. It was wrong, and we stand by it as an organization that it was incorrect. It was wrong, and 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 that's that's all we can really say at this point. I know you want more, but I can't I can't really give you more. Okay, in the front right here. Gentlemen. The investigation and interviews were conducted by the Astros, by Major League Baseball, and that in discussing the, how discipline and resolution of this, did Major League Baseball have any input? The, um, many of the interviews were done jointly. Some of the interviews were done independently. Um, the Astros had done some interviews independently 
and Major League Baseball did interviews independently and some were done jointly. Um, we decided once we had, uh, once the interviews were concluded yesterday that we were going to take action unilaterally ahead of Major League Baseball making any recommendations and that's what we did. Okay, right here. Two questions. First of all, can you talk about how embarrassing this is to you and the Astro organization? It's not what I want to be here talking about. And, and it's, you know, hopefully when AJ gets in here, you, you'll get back to talking about game three and this series. Um, it's, it's unfortunate timing and it's unfortunate stage for this to occur, but it's, it's wrong. The comments that were made were incorrect, regardless of whether it was on a big stage or not. So, um, you know, we stand by the decision that we made today. And back to that initial statement, which I know you are not going to give us much details about. Did you play any role in that initial statement directly or indirectly? I saw it before it went out. And there's a lot of people that saw it before it went out. So in that, in that respect, yes, I did. Hey, Ken, over here. Jeff, you just said we hope you hope when AJ gets here we can talk about game three, but it seems like part of the origin of this whole thing was Brandon's refusal to accept people who wanted to still voice their protests about the, acu the acquisition of Osuna. Uh, so I'm wondering, are you at peace with the idea that this is a, a permanent stand on the Houston Astros and, and on your legacy, what has transpired these last few days? Um, and it's, it's not a matter of This was an on. employee that I hired and that's worked for us for five years who did something that was out of character for him, um, not, not consistent with his behavior in the past. That is not something that we uh, condone or not reflective of, of what the Astros uh, culture is all about or what we believe in. So yeah, of course, any, any one person that belongs to an organization that does something is going to affect that organization. But this is not something that's endemic. This is not a cultural issue. Um, we have a lot of really good people in our front office, in our, you know, in our coaching staff, on our team, and, and that's really much more representative of, of who we are than, than comments of an individual who, quite frankly, this is out of character for that individual as well. But then the statement, Brandon did not craft no, that statement on Brandon Monday, so it goes that. beyond just yeah. one person. Is that fair? Yeah, that, uh, the organization has to own that statement, and, and I've said that, and as an organization, we apologize for it, and that's really all I can, all I can give you at this point. Hey, Scott, over here. Jeff, in, in terms of accountability that you're talking about, how in the world could, from that time until now, only your manager have been made available publicly? We were cooperating with Major League Baseball and in doing investigation and going as quickly as we possibly can. As you know, I did make some comments yesterday morning on the radio, and they were different than the statement and I did apologize. And even though reporters chose to pick parts of that comment that were not the apology and put that as their headlines, I did apologize. I apologized to everybody involved. And uh, I, at that point, I had, a, I, I had more information and I knew that, that that initial statement was correct, but we were halfway through the investigation and I wasn't gonna make a statement uh, in terms of actions or, or anything further than just an apology and that we're cooperating with MLB and looking into it. So I know it felt like a long time the news cycle is very quick, but we acted as quickly as we could, and, and we made a determination last night and, and made an announcement today. Kenny, over here. Right here. Jeff, today's statement has an apology to Stephanie Epstein. Is the apology for, having, for her having to witness this incident, or is the apology for you guys, the Astros, smearing her initial report? The apology is for both. It's for... Uh, having to witness the incident and it's to the other reporters that were there and anybody who felt offended or that the comments were directed at them and it certainly was also for the reaction that the Astros had immediately after the article was published which was inappropriate and wrong and uh, and we apologize for that in the back there Jeff, fue un comentario en español de, del incidente que, que ocurrió y, y la postura que toman como equipo. Y otra preguntita de, de la situación actual que vive el club llegando acá con una desventaja 0 y 2. Pues um, la situación era desafortunadamente algo que no queríamos durante este torneo. Um, 
la persona que hizo los comentarios ya no está con los astros y eh, pedimos mucho perdona de, de la gente que estaba involucrada y la persona que escribió el artículo y, y el response, que, lo, lo que dijo los astros de, inmediatamente después. Es una respuesta de la organización. Uh, no hay una persona que lo hizo y, y lo tomamos la responsabilidad como nosotros, como una organización. Y estamos aquí para mañana, ojalá poner esto en, en otro lugar, otra conversación y empezar a hablar más sobre uh, lo que viene mañana. Pero claro que es algo importante y queremos uh, que tiene el propio enfoque. Okay, David Banner. Jeff, how many people were interviewed prior to the first statement that was issued? And how many people were, did it end up being interviewed before the statement that was issued today? So uh, as, as you read in today's statement, it was not only the, um, the perspective of the person that was being accused, but a, a, a one corroborating witness that saw things basically that supported what, what he was telling us. And uh, it wasn't an investigation, so I'm not going to call it an investigation. It was just the information that, um, that we had quickly. And uh, there were uh, a number of people uh, that were, anybody who was in the room within earshot that was around was ultimately interviewed. Um, and that's, you know, it's, an, it's a, it's a I'm not, I don't know the exact number. I wasn't involved in the interviews, but it's more than a few. Why was it important you to, to issue a statement so quickly after the story appeared? I think when, you know, a story comes out that's negative, um, you, you have two choices. You either respond immediately if you think it's potentially not true, or you wait and, and figure out what the facts are and, and then respond. And we, we made the wrong decision. We responded quickly, thinking that it was not true. And, um, it turned out that that was the incorrect way to go about it. Hey, Joel, over here. Jeff, there seems to be a conflation of two things that happened. One was what Brandon did that night, and one was how you guys reacted to mm -hmm. it. For what Brandon did, he lost his job today. Mm -hmm. For the other thing, if we're not here right now, for what you just said was not even an investigation, you smeared and potentially damaged a person's career. Shouldn't there be a price paid for the people who decided that that was the idea in the way that Brandon Talman just had to pay with his career? I don't know the answer to that, to be honest with you. Well, you run the organization. You're one of the people I, who runs the organization. I run the baseball operations, as you know, right? And I well, help. Jim Crane hasn't come today, Jeff. I, I understand that. Um, and and we're, we're taking responsibility and accountability for that and apologizing for it. And at this point, that's, that's all I can tell you. Okay, I don't have anything else to give you. Okay, Sorry about that. Matt right here. You said there were, you know, a number of people with a statement and all that, but my question is, will there be further disciplinary action other than what's already been taken? I, I you know, the person that, that was responsible for making those inappropriate comments has been terminated with, from employment with the Astros, and that's the action that we've taken at this point. I don't have any comment. I, I can't. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. But you thought so highly of him. Didn't you just extend him a new contract? Yeah. He, he's been a valuable employee. I, you know, we hired him over five years ago. He's moved up quickly in the organization. Um, he's smart. He's hardworking, and this is what these comments that he made were were out of character. He's he hasn't had this type of incident before. This is not a repeating pattern of anything, uh, which is why it was so easy for, one reason why it was so easy for us to believe that, um, that he, you know, it was, it was more innocent than it turned out to be. This is an emotional game. Mm -hmm. People, uh, emotions swing back and forth. What was it like for you emotionally to find out what had happened to one of your prize employees? It's devastating. Uh, it's not, it's not something I wish on anybody in this room. Um, it's just like I don't wish any of you to be standing up here having to answer these questions either. But um, it's part of life, and we learn our lessons from it. And um, Brandon, I'm sure, has learned uh, a lesson, and we'll, we'll hopefully will never do anything like that again. And I think everybody that observed it has also learned a lesson. And we as an organization have certainly learned a lesson about uh, taking our time to react and, and making sure that we don't do anything to make the situation worse, because that's essentially what we did. 
Hey, Jake, right here. To, to go back to your answer a few minutes ago, just for clarity's sake, so you, between the, the time the story came out and the first statement, you only interviewed Taubman and one other Astros employee. Um, I, I wouldn't say interviewed because it's not a, you know, we weren't doing an investigation. Um, we did have some uh, warning that the article was coming out, didn't know what the details of it were, so we had an opportunity to ask a few people who we knew were in the room what their observations were, and that was, that was the extent of it, including the person that was, we knew was going to get be accused of saying inappropriate things. Okay, over here. Hey, Jeff. On the radio, you said yesterday that there were different perspectives about that incident. Um, how could that square with kind of the sentiment you're giving right now? about how sorry you are for what happened, if, if it is that. I'm very sorry. I, different perspectives because um, the original impression that we had without doing an investigation, and that's our, our fault for not doing the investigation, was that it was two colleagues talking who were overheard, and the comments were not directed at anybody in particular and not meant to be uh, mean-spirited in any way or, or offensive in any way, just uh, supportive of the player who had had a bad night. That's the, that's the one perspective, and obviously the other perspective was that those comments were inappropriate and said over and over and louder and intended to be heard, and that's, that's what I was talking about, just different, different points of view about what happened. But the, 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 as we continued to investigate, uh, it was clear that the, they were intended to be heard, and they weren't completely inappropriate. I mean, they were inappropriate anyway, but... Um, Supporting a player is not inappropriate, but supporting it in order to uh, make someone feel something negative, that is inappropriate. And what have you changed after you gave it? No, I didn't want to talk about, I mean, we were still, I didn't do the interviews, right? I, I, I was waiting for the conclusion, but I had gotten some more information myself. And, and I, I, at that point, I knew that the story we had heard originally, it was very different than the story that I was now hearing. Simple as that. Okay, guys, one last one we have time for. Jeff, have you personally reached out to apologize to any of the women who were directly impacted by this? And also, do you feel that in some ways this has set back some of the supposed progress that women have made in the clubhouse and the locker room? I, I can't answer that second question. I, you know, there's a lot of really talented female journalists in, in baseball and other sports and in journalism in general, and I. I hope that continues, and uh, there's no reason to think that this is a setback, I hope. Um, I have not. I have been traveling up here. We've been, um, I mean, I had, to, uh, I had to have a pretty tough conversation this morning with someone that's worked with me for a long time, so, um, but, I, but I will as soon as I can. Okay, thank you, Jeff. We have to wrap up, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Jeff Luna will be out next.